whole day to go knock out some weeds. Let's get to it. It's supposed to be 63 degrees Fahrenheit today for the high. That's the coldest high I think we've had all season. Oh, times are changing. That's okay. That's okay. It'll hopefully slow down some of these plants from growing like they are. But it does mean winter wheat seeding's coming soon. So I got to get on that. <laughs> I've got to finish this job first. And I do need to buff that tank still. I want it to be nice and shiny. We just haven't had a chance yet because we've just been at it. You guys know what it's like, right? Right? Hop in. and everything's going great and then my phone notified me and said soccer oh i gotta take the kids to soccer game they play soccer and uh it's their first year and i don't want to miss it so i'm shutting down go watch some kiddos kick some soccer balls around it should be fun so i'll get back to it the weeds won't grow anymore all right well here's how we're sitting uh i'm not spraying today uh we've been talking to some guys trying to get a feel of what we should do with that canola and the consensus we're getting is better not let it go. Even though those flowers could turn to more seed, you just don't know what the weather's gonna do. We're, we're chancing the weather. It could turn into winter really quick and lose it all. And estimated there's three to four bushels an acre out there. Could surprise us if we get more, but I'm just gonna say three to four. At 400 acres, that's like 1,600 bushels. At $15 a bushel right now, it's like $24,000, $25,000 of canola out on our farm. We spent like 30 grand on the seed. So we're gonna take a loss and that alone. Not alone the, the, word, the operation of combining it and seeding it and all that. It'll be an absolute loss for sure for us. But it's 25 grand sitting out there, we gotta get it. So um, I took a sample out of the combine that I had from the other day when I went up and tried it. And um, it's testing around that 12 moisture with just the canola seed. The green junk in it is bumping up to like 14, 15% moisture. There's a lot of junk in it. There's some wheat here because there was some volunteer growing in the field. But here's the thing, we've got a cleaner. We've got that GSI cleaner. We've got screens. So we've been tearing through all of our screens trying to figure out what are we gonna do? Because we can clean that stuff. We can get most of the green, the larger green chunks out and uh, then put it on a bin, put air on it and it should be okay. It's only like 1,600 bushels, 2,000 bushels. It's not that much. It should dry right down, no problem. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this screen that I bought, put it on top of one of the larger screens, it's gonna go in that cleaner, and that'll filter out all the large chunks. And then the bottom screen is gonna take all the canola and run it right out. We'll run it through that cleaner, go into the truck, truck to the bin, put air on it, and be done with harvest. Done, no combine sitting outside. So that's what we're doing. So we're getting stuff geared up. We're just, I'm gonna go get the cleaner, get to work. That goes in, and uh, I think the cleaner's all set. Check the auger. Runs. Let's do a shaker test. All right, let's run a little bit through it. I got some in the hopper that Scott just dumped in the truck from the little test cut I did, so we'll just see what happens.
geez, there's so much grain coming out of there. It's, uh, I think that was in the grain tank of the combine from harvesting wheat. So it shows it's working. It's taking all that out. There's still a little bit of this fine green stuff, but that's we're at such a fine line where we can't get that out. It's got look at all the grain coming out of all the wheat. Okay, uh, Dad went out to chop a little bit of uh, canola, and the spreader on the back of it stopped spreading and uh, plugged up the back of the combine, so we got to dig it out. So we're looking for a couple of pitchforks, and uh, here we go. Here's a good one. Here's this. Sucker. So we got to go dig it out. We don't know what caused it. it could be the spreader. It is a little too low and it just couldn't feed it out fast enough. It's green too. Um, that canola is regrowing and uh, well, that doesn't help. So we'll see. Go out there and uh, clean it up. Clean that out. Oh, I hope we clean that out. Well, what do you think? Not bad, considering what we've gotten out of this so far. If you look closely, there is a little bit of canola getting kicked out. That's just how it's gonna be. You can't get it all. But I mean, a little bit of the greens, but the problem is we're getting to this size, it's almost the size of the large canola. So that's why you see greens on there is because if I try to sort that out, we're gonna lose a lot of canola. So I just sit here with these uh, conveniently labeled ready buckets. And as soon as it fills up, I swap it out, dump one in here. We have a little auger. We, we're gonna have to transition the cleanings or the screenings. This is a bigger hopper, but the motor quit working on it. We're not ready to get that fixed right now. So. I'll just keep doing this. We got the cylinder back from uh, the hydraulic place. They put a new ram in it and fixed it all up so we can put that back on this coil packer. 
And then I got to make a couple hydraulic lines because they got ripped apart. Um, put it back together and then I can go park this thing and then take the 600 Big Bud and hook up to one of the air drills. So yeah, here's the cylinder right over here. Let's go put it on. It's rain weather, except for I'm out of chemicals, so won't be doing any more tonight. Did uh, get the opportunity to run a trespasser off the farm who was dumping their garbage out in our area. This happens frequently because we live close to town and people use our farm as the second city dump when they either A, don't want to go to the city dump or B, it's closed and they just are too lazy to wait till the next day for it to open. So it was Labor Day and it was a great opportunity to go chew someone out. And I did. can say 2021 is a wrap for harvest. This could be going in the bin. We're removing it. We don't want any ex extra moisture with the canola in the bin. We want to dry it down so that there's no spoilage. And it's doing a pretty good job of removing a lot of material. A lot of material. Look at that. Beautiful. That's not going in our bin. All right, guys. So we're grinding in that canola, and it's 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 going. It's going with that cleaner. It's working, but we got a lot more canola to do. And I'm gonna service the combine for Dad because um, he likes to just get it and go. So let's get this combine fired up, ready to roll. Give it to dad, let him keep doing what he's doing best. That's knocking those canola acres out. She's a little bit low on oil, so maybe I'll top that off too while I'm at it. They're known to burn a little bit of oil. It's the engine running at wide open, day in and day out. Um, some of our old combines back in the day would burn like a gallon a day, <laughs> but this isn't bad at all. So I expect it to be a little low. We're gonna drop oil on this thing soon and put new oil in it for the next season because we're almost done with this season. So it's not a big deal, but it's towards the bottom of the ad mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a couple gallons in it, whatever that ends up being to make it full again. Poor Clifford's been running without B-spine. I think he knows B-spine went off and had a little fun. I've noticed the way it's run a little bit. It's gonna sense a little sad mood. Oh, we're filling up. So first I'm gonna start off with a little bit of greasing. Grease is uh, really important. It's gotten to be less of demand in these combines because they've come up with greaseless bearings and joints that amazingly do really well. It's just kind of like how 
you just have to grease all the tie rod ends, ball joints on your cars, and now you don't have to, and they run 100,000 miles, which is, well, I guess it depends where you're running at. But it's isn't amazing, so it's taken a lot less daily maintenance to keep these combines going, which is a huge thing over the old 2588s we had. These flagships are just simple to get going each day, so simple. But there's still some joints, especially on the header, that needs grease. Let's get some grease. This is CNH Industrial's multi-purpose grease. Stays in contact with moving surfaces, minimal dripping, leaking and splattering, seals out contaminants, and decreases frequency of lubrication and noise reduction and dampering. Looks like good stuff to me. So you got a sealed end here, kind of like a pop cap that you pull off, or like a spam. Remember spam cartridges or cans? They have the same thing. And you got this little plastic over here. So there we go. That's the good stuff right there. Now we gotta get a grease gun. So you got this plunger here. Pull it back, it's spring loaded. There's a lock. That then takes the tension off the spring. So you can then take the grease tube, shove it down inside like so. And then when you're ready, take the cap, peel it back like a pop can lid or an old spam container. Then take it, screw it into the grease head, press the release button, let the air out. You gotta press it a bunch like that. And then just start pumping. There we go. All right, primed. Let's go grease. Now, this is part of Case IH's most advanced portfolio of lubricants. Grease being one of many options available. Now your local Case IH dealer will be your full source oil provider and the only place to get genuine OEM lubricants. Now your knife head, you gotta be careful about over greasing it, otherwise it'll put tension on your sickle bar and then it'll cause your knife to wear un unevenly. So you don't wanna do that. I like to just give one shot, maybe two. I actually watch and I can see the gap between the cutter bar head and your uh, sickle arm here, and you can see it move. So if you watch carefully, I'll make a little teeny gap. There, there we go. Just started to move, that's where I stop at. All right, finished the grease spots, I need it greased. No, that wasn't a how to grease your combine tutorial because there's a lot of other spots in this combine that needs grease. So make sure you check your manual and your hours and get it done appropriately with the right grease. But let's drive this over and put some oil in it. Let's get ready to go combine. Let's go find dad. Get him in the field. All right. Well, this last field that I'm just about ready to finish is right next to this field right here, which is where my great uncle first came and homesteaded in 1911. Grandfather followed him the next year. And of course, uh, that's uh, a lot more coming with the story. But anyway, this is the last swath edge that I'm harvesting for 2021. All right, it's in the books. Hopefully it'll be in the bank too. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it back to the uh, farm, to the shop where Scott is cleaning what I've already cut on this field. And uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, get the combine cleaned up here in the next couple days get the winter wheat started and move on some more vids so appreciate it guys we'll uh, catch you in the return at least the next commercial we are done cleaning canola in fact this truckload right here is getting kind of stinky it's uh it's got a very unique smell to it but we're done with that so if i can clean this area up then i can get this truck go dump it and the backhoe conveyor needs a little gas and then I'll put it over and uh, get ready for chickpeas when we need to move some chickpeas. We still have some in the bin that needs to be moved out of there. So anyways, let's go get some gas in this thing because it's thirsty.
it's going to be.